Hello and welcome to the official AE Racing YouTube channel. My name's Rob. My name's Mike. And we're back with episode six, a four, five, and six. And we're back with episode six of our low cost race car build. This one's a bit long awaited. Mostly because the ruddy rhinovirus, as, as with everyone, causes loads of hassle. But we have managed to get a good bash at it for a day or so, and it's come a long way in that day, as you can see. So, roll the damn logo. So we're going to take you through the bits that we've done, roughly in the order that we did them, so it makes a bit more sense. Thanks to the coronavirus, we needed to get this over to the workshop to make it easier to work on. And to do that, we needed steering, get it on and off a trailer, in and out of the workshop. You might remember Swiss cheese, which was our original Mazda that was holy as hell. One of the main things we took off that, which I wanted to keep from the get-go, was the steering column. And that's because it's collapsible, as you can see through here and here. So if someone crashes into the front of us, because we ain't gonna be crashing into front of anyone else, it's always gonna be their fault, we won't end up being impaled, because this will collapse in on itself, and we live to drive another day. Placement of the column was one of the things that we needed to sort out and decide. As with all the things when we've been doing this build, we've been looking to see what everyone else has been doing, because hopefully they make the mistakes and we learn from their mistakes, so on. So one of the things that other people have been doing is the steering column as it comes down here, some of them have been taking it just underneath this main bar, probably to help with clearance from down the side of the engine and so on. But that then encroaches on the foot space that you have uh, down with your pedals. And we wanted to have, you know, clowns with big feet. Anyone can get in it and drive it. One of the things I was a little bit apprehensive about was the wiring loom. Now, Mike assured me that it wasn't too complicated. And when we got the car to the workshop, Mike sort of plugged a few bits into the engine around the front. And uh, yeah, it turns out it's not too bad. So I think we should, shouldn't have any problems with this. But we got the guides and everything like that. It's pretty, pretty easy. You've got the big plug that goes into the box that makes it go broom, broom. And then a lot of the wiring goes into the back of the, uh, the dash for the clocks and then runs down the back to the lights and uh, a few other parts like that. But um, yeah, pretty good. One of the parts that made our race car really look like a race car and allow it to start taking shape are these really sexy looking side panels that we created. Now, as you just saw there, it took us a while, a really long while, because to create these holes for the arms and stuff to come out of, we had to make some big holes with some little tools. <laughs> but as you can see, it really does make the car look like a race car. Um, we've just cut them to shape, folded them in places, and then riveted them straight to the side of the chassis. Once we're out on the track, you might get a glimpse in your mirror of this lovely nose cone and someone in the seat screaming because they're coming into the corner too fast. So just move aside and let us through. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. This nose cone we did get with the chassis when we bought it. So it's a bit battered and a bit, bit bruised, but that's because we treat it like that. It'll be all right. Once it's painted, it'll be fine. But it does hide the nice new shiny radiator that we bought for it, which is really thick, as you can tell there, just to make sure we've got lots of cooling. And then we've got a bit of space on the inside so that we can get the fan in there, just for when we're sat waiting at the uh, start line, ready to go. The next part of the bodywork was this lovely big piece in the middle, the main bonnet, which we needed to be able to take off and put back on. We haven't got everything for it yet. We're still waiting for some straps for down here. And we put this big bit of alley across the top just to neaten it up against the scuttle panel. 
Had to cut out around the exhaust as close as we could really, just so it makes it look a lot nicer. And then this lovely big cut out in the middle because these chassis were never made to have this engine so it, it just really pokes out. When you get a nice big bulge, bonnet bulge that we got to make still uh, to get that bit sorted. That's about it for the bonnet. But it does bring us down to the front mud guards, wheel guards, wheel arches, whatever you want to call them. We had to make up some bits that come up, bend over, we just rivet him straight to the top. There is and has been some talk on the Facebook pages about the positions of these. Now they've put it in the regulations, again it's always a good thing to make sure you keep checking the regulations. They have to be a certain distance past the centre line of the wheel and that then means the position they're in is right. It's just to make all the racing fair and even again, I think it's the main thing. Other than that, I don't really know what else it does. <laughs> Another section of the body panelling that we uh, we managed to get fitted was the rear section. So we gave it, the car a lovely, nice, shiny pair of pants. As you can see, it makes it look much more like a race car. Uh, it was a little bit tricky to, to fit because the, of the way the back section of the chassis sort of angles up towards the top of the car meant that we had to almost get it lined up at the top and then bend it round and then knock around, knock the sections under and cut it into shape. So it did take a little bit of time, but um, there's still a little bit more to do to it. And we've got to fully rivet it onto the chassis because obviously we've got to get it off to, to spray it all still. Um, but then we curved all the top and yeah, it actually came out looking pretty good, we think. Once we had fitted the rear panel, that meant we was able to then fit the rear arches. Um, we riveted them on, but as you can see, they are sitting a little bit higher than they should do because we've got the incorrect uh, suspension on the car at the moment, but we've ordered that and that should be coming soon. So you'll see that in a future video. It's amazing how when you're doing these sort of builds and you give yourself a deadline or when the racing started, which is our deadline, it's amazing how fast it comes around. So we, we just, we really wanted to crack on with it and get on with it and get going. Yeah, so we put a lot of time and you know a lot of hours into trying to get it ready for that deadline. We hope that what you've seen today, you know, our hard work is starting to pay off and uh, she's starting to look like a proper race car. It really is. I reckon. Uh, I reckon we should just try and take it for a test drive, mate. Let's do it. She handles amazing, Rob. Give us some more power, Rob. Try more it. It's, power. It's snowing. Get the traction down. We've got to take this hairpin. Come on, that's power. We need to go back in. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed the video. Sorry it's taken a little bit longer than usual for this one, but that's because we've been cracking on with so many other things. Hopefully go and watch some of our other videos that we've done, some Tops Tires, which is a new series we've been uh, really trying to work at. Yeah, so make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on your notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.